Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Daily Wildcat Hoops podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Wall, and today I am joined by a very special guest. He is one of the premier voices in college basketball. He is a basketball analyst for Stadium, a co-founder for the Field of 68. He is Jeff Goodman. How are you today? And you forgot, I'm a, I'm a Wildcat. That's the other part. You know, yeah, you the, are an alumni. Maybe the most important thing, right? Yeah, you are an alumni. And let's Let's start there. Um, there's been a lot of, you know, transitions for this program, new players, obviously Tommy Lloyd coming in from Gonzaga after 20 years, Sean Miller was out after more than a decade. I mean, how do you think this transition will be? You think it'll be smooth? Well, listen, I, you know, talking to Tommy and it's no secret that Sean left him not a full cover, but, but a good amount of talent. And you don't generally walk into situations like this after a coach has been fired. You know, usually it's a, it's a rebuild. This is not a complete rebuild by any means. In fact, uh, you got a lot of talent in this roster, a team that probably should be, and, and I think we would probably say it on a record, should be an NCAA tournament team. You know, I, I think it probably depends on point guard play as much as anything else, Ryan. But, you know, again, Sean Miller left them, uh, plenty to finish in the top four in the Pac-12. And I think if you finish in the top four, UCLA is going to be really good this year, which will help the league. Oregon's going to be good. And I don't know if, I don't know how much it, it matters what they did in the NCAA tournament last year, but I don't think it can hurt from a credibility standpoint. The, the league was sorely lacking credibility the last few years. And I think it needed that to kind of get, you know, maybe some more teams ranked higher um, coming into the season. And a lot of it is that, you know, you got to be ranked high and then deliver in November, December, because that's when the conference really builds its resume. And that's when it allows some of those fringe teams to be able to get in the NCAA tournament with resume wins. Yeah. Arizona, hopefully, I mean, if there, if there's not another, you know, postseason ban, we don't know that right now, but um, yeah, they should be for sure. A tournament team, hopefully great to see them back in the tournament. It'll be for the first time, and if they make it for the first time in, I think, four years um, since 2018, I believe, which is pretty crazy to think about it. Um, but, yeah, I wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, James Akinjo transferring to Baylor, as we know. He was the leading scorer for Arizona. You know, he took all the last-second shots. Like, who, who do you think, you know, can take – do you think of anybody, and who do you think that could be to take over that role? I mean, I think a lot is going to be on Kerr. You know, like he, he's the guy to me. He's the X factor. Um, you know, I think we know what Tabellus is going to bring to the table. He's going to produce. Uh, I think Ben will be better. I still think he'll be a little erratic, um, but he can shoot the ball. And uh, I think he'll give you a secondary score. But I think Kerr is the guy that will give you a little bit of tenacity, hopefully be a guy that can break guys down off the bounce and score and also obviously run the team and distribute and play under control. Uh, but I think they've got almost everything else. You know, I think Coloco certainly now, you know, he's got experience, um, defensive minded big who I think can play with just about anybody on the defensive end. You're not going to get a ton out of them offensively. Um, but I, yeah, I think Kerr's kind of the wild card to me and really the X factor. And if he can play the point and be one of the top, I think, honestly, if he can be one of the top five point guards in the Pac-12, I think that's what you need him to be. He's got to be one of the top five point guards in the Pac-12. And then they're a tournament team because they have enough around him. It's really going to be more on him than anything else. How confident, I just want to know, how confident are you that Kirk can be that guy? Because from what I've seen, I've been to a few practices. I saw the red-blue game. Um, I saw them against Eastern New Mexico this past um, week. And he yep. seems like he was kind of hunting threes too much. And I think that's where he gets – when he gets to a standstill like that, I feel like that's when he's not that valuable because, you know, he's a smaller guard. He struggles to get to the hole, and I think he needs to, you know, just find open shooters more and use that ability. No doubt, because he'll have guys that can score. So the, the first thing is making him more of a point guard and, and a better decision maker. And what they don't need is him jacking threes left and right. They need him being able to get in the teeth of the defense and, and then make things easier for his teammates. Because again, I think he's got enough. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying they're like final four-ish, but I think they're NCAA tournament. 
where they can win a game, maybe two and, and sneak into the sweet 16. You know, the hard part is going to be the difference in, in systems and coaching styles, right? Yeah. You know, Sean Miller, fiery, defensive minded, Tommy Lloyd, he's got some fire to him. Don't get me wrong, but, but he's not quite like Sean Miller is on that end. And obviously it's more about offense and skill and moving the ball and uh, guys who can really make shots and, and, and that, you know, floor spacing, uh, not as much, you know, probably put on defense as certainly Sean had. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As of so from what I've seen so far, they're moving quicker, you know, in transition. And that seems like where they're excelling. Um, I know you do your top 25 preseason rankings, but what, what would be the range or just an estimate of where you would have Arizona about? I'd say somewhere from like 30 to 40, you know, somewhere in that vicinity for me, I forget where we ranked them in the top 50. It might've been on the around 40 ish. I feel like, you know, again, it's so hard because for me, I start with point guard play. That's the most important thing for me. And Arizona's point guard play is probably its biggest question mark right now. Yeah. So, um, you know, the staff likes Kerr. Uh, they have liked them all summer. And again, I think Dalen Terry's been a guy that they've, they've spoken highly of lately. Uh, the jump that he's been able to make and can make this season. But I, again, I think you got a, you know, a college star in Tubelis, not a, not an NBA star. And I don't think Matherin's going to be an NBA star either. I think he'll be a guy that, you know, gets drafted based on his potential. He's got to produce, like he's got to produce and be consistent uh, instead of being a guy that, you know, scores four one night and lights it up for 25 the next. Yeah, the, the, the big question mark I have with this team, besides the, you know, Kerr, you know, he didn't play a lot last year. But my biggest question mark is, like I said, with, with James Akinjo was that go-to scorer. Yeah. This team, they don't have anybody who has experience doing that. Benedict Matherin came on in the second half last year, but he wasn't, he wasn't consistent the entire season. He would have games where he had like 30, I think, against Oregon State, and then he would have 10, you know. So, I, yeah, yeah, I really think they could struggle some nights against these tougher Pac-12 opponents to, to score to score points because we just don't know where it will come from. But the the next guy I wanted to ask you about, the guy that really impressed me recently was Justin Kyer, you know, transfer from uh, Georgia, fifth-year yeah. guy. I mean, w what do you expect him to provide to this team? Well, I mean, I think the, the one thing with these two transfers that they brought in, um, Kyer and, and, and certainly Kim Aiken, is they're older, right? And, and you need that. And teams that aren't as talented, which they're not as talented as UCLA or probably even Oregon, um, you better be old. You better be old. And, and that's what really Tommy Lloyd looked to do and, and the staff looked to do with these guys that they brought in. But, you know, I, I think, again, this is a guy that was good at George Mason, played a ton of, of years there. You know, I think he played four years maybe at George Mason yeah. then played at Georgia. So he, I mean, he might be older than, than, than I am, Ryan. So uh, he's been, he's been through yeah. it. He has been through yeah, that it. Is, that's for sure. Yeah, he is. And you need that. He's a veteran. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I think Aiken's a big, strong dude who can help out physically. Um, so I, they're, they're deep enough. You know, they're deep enough. There's not a huge drop off, which is can be a good thing or a bad thing from like one to 10. Uh, I don't know if they have that that superstar type. But again, I'll go to war with Tubelos any day of the week. I think he's going to make another jump. And, you know, to me, you know, Kyra and, and, um, and Aiken are two guys that I think fit what what this team needed for this year. Yeah, a guy you mentioned briefly, but wanted to get in a little bit more is Dalen Terry's he's one of my favorite players to watch. He's really exciting. I feel like he didn't really excel in Sean Miller's style of offense because he's kind of a, a – he he plays better when he has the ball in his hand, but with, you know, next to Kerr, he, he was playing a lot of shooting guard, not a lot of movement, as we know, on the offensive end. But, you know, this year it looks to – he'll get the ball more as Kerr will play, you know, some off ball. I mean, like how big of an impact do you think he can make? Yeah, I mean, listen, he's going to have to. You know, he, he's kind of a guy that they're counting on to take a big jump. And, you know, they don't really have anything else like him, you know, in terms of kind of that long athletic wing who can uh, who can make plays and, and match up with some of the uh, some of the guys in the Pac-12 that are, you know, again, everybody wants multidimensional, versatile 
forwards these days or wings. Yeah. And that's what they're hoping that Dale and Terry can become. And if, you know, again, if he can become a guy that they can count on for 10, 12 points and uh, be a good defender, that's all you want from him in his, in his sophomore season. That would be huge for, for them to be able to count on. Um, but again, like it's going to be interesting with Tommy Lloyd in his first year inheriting a lot of these guys. They're not his players, but he was fortunate. He inherited not only a lot of pretty good players, but some players that he probably would have recruited, right? I mean, yeah. like Velas and Matherin, he probably, I'm not sure he would have recruited them specifically, but guys like them, you know, he's obviously, we know big and international guys. And uh, those are the type of players that he would absolutely recruit. So that's the positive too, is it's not like you got to change everything. It's almost like Sean Miller toughened him up last year. And now Tommy Lloyd reaps the benefits of that, that they're tougher than maybe they would have been at Gonzaga or, or someplace, you know, St. Mary's. And now they have that skill level, at least the international guys. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. And yeah, Terry's a really interesting player. He doesn't have a set position necessarily. So that's why it's kind of weird to project and kind of feel where he's going to go. But um, yeah, I just wanted to, you, you mentioned Sean Miller there uh, again a little bit. But I mean, what did you what did you think of that whole fallout? Did you think it was the right time for Sean Miller, you know, to to cut and Arizona, you know, to mutually cut ties? Or did you think that Sean Miller, you know, knowing it was a COVID year and all that, the ban that he should have been given another year or two? Uh, I just thought it was the best decision for both parties. I, I do. I think it was the best decision for Sean Miller and kind of his his mental health um, because it wasn't going to get any better. We know that we, we just saw what happened with Oklahoma state and their one year postseason ban was upheld. I, I don't know if, if maybe the NCAA takes Arizona's one year um, self-imposed ban and, and, and that's it. I have no idea, but it was you, still hanging over the head. Have of you the heard program. anything more on that? I, know I have very not. connected to Arizona. Yeah. No? I haven't heard anything lately on that at all, whether something's coming down when it's coming down. Um, it will be soon, but I, I don't know how soon. Um, yeah. so I, I think, you know, the big thing right now is, is, you know, again, if you were Arizona, you, you wanted to move forward and the hardest part to move forward, you know, having Sean there was again, he recruited, listen, give him credit. He and Jack Murphy did an incredible job going the international route and getting a bunch of really good players. I, I didn't think that was possible for a guy that two guys that had no ties uh, overseas. So they did a great job. They just weren't going to be able to get Arizona type players. And I don't know if Tommy Lloyd's going to be able to get Arizona type recruits either. You know, the fact that they were even in there fighting Kentucky for Shaden Sharp, the number one player in the country was insane. I mean, honestly, insane. Think about yeah. it. You've got a brand new head yeah. coach. You're, you're under an NCAA investigation and you're one of two for the number one player in the country. Like, that's crazy to me. So I, I think, again, it was probably the best move for both parties. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, for the program's sake, for Sean's sake, um, it, it kind of, you know, again, I just don't know if he was ever going to be able to get it going to the level. Now, again, he could have inherited this team and maybe he would have kept Akinjo probably. I, I saw Akinjo down at Baylor. I don't think he would have left if Sean was still here. So imagine Akinjo with this team. You're talking about maybe being a, a I don't know, a, an outside Final Four type team, right? Things would have to go right. But, you know, with Tubelis, with Matherin, with Akinjo, and, and those guys being older, um, especially the two guys, you know, two international guys being, you know, having a year under their belt, who knows with this team? So it's almost like, you know, maybe maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe, again, if, if they had kind of kept Sean, he keeps Akinjo, and they got a chance. I just felt like it had kind of run its course from a standpoint of, I, I felt like Sean needed it. And I felt like, you know, Arizona probably needed it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was uh mutual for both parties there, but how confident also are you for Tommy Lloyd to bring, you know, Mark few and Gonzaga's kind of style of system to Arizona. And do you think he can, he can make it work? And, and also another thing is how, because you know he hasn't been a head coach this is his first time like or do you think he, you're are you also confident he can be a good head coach i think he can i think it's hard going from gonzaga assistant to arizona you're not going from gonzaga to 
you know, Grand Canyon or Washington State or something like that. This isn't, this is Arizona. This is one of the best 10 programs in America. Um, I like the hire of Steve Robinson at the end, a guy who's at least been a head coach. It was a long time ago, even keel guy, veteran. He's been around a long time. So I actually think that probably helps them instead of having Jason Terry. I think that's more of what he needed because I don't think JT was a big time recruiter, great with the players, but had never been a head coach. So I, I think Steve Robinson is probably more of what Tommy needed. Um, and Ricky, I love Ricky to death. I just, you know, I still question whether this staff is strong enough to go get dudes. But again, they're not going to be able to get dudes yet. They're not going to be able to get top 25 players, in my opinion, until this thing is behind them. So I, I don't know how much that matters. I think Ricky's going to be phenomenal, and he trusts Ricky. Ricky's just young at this yeah. point. Um, you know, Jack Murphy's done, like I said, a great job. Um, Steve Robinson has had North Carolina behind him to recruit. You know, now, again, he had North Carolina behind him, but he had a lot of shit hanging over their head. So he's kind of used to that end of it, not being able to go after top 10 players, top 25 players of Carolina when they were used to doing so. He's kind of, he can probably help Tommy Lloyd a lot in, in many different ways, how to handle the coaching part of it, the recruiting part of it, a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, you know, this team has some prospects, some NBA prospects, potentially Benedict Mather and Jules Tabellas. Um, do you believe either either of them will leave this year? And even down the road, you know, they have some young – Arizona has a lot of young talent. Who else stands out to you? Even if they're not, maybe maybe they have to stay another year or two. But who stands yeah. out as an NBA I mean, Matherin's player? the guy to me that NBA guys, when I talk to, really like him. You know, they want to see more of, you know, a Pell Larson. You know, we haven't even talked about him, and I know he's been hurt a little bit. Um, but, yeah, you know, Yeah, we should be back by game one. Yeah, I mean, if he's back – you know, he's a guy that I think, again, people are intrigued by because he's, you know, you, as you mentioned, uh, Kerr doesn't have the size. Pell's got the size and, and he can yeah. score it. Can he play some point? That's the big question, right? Can he help out and, and, and you know, be a secondary ball handler at the very least? But I would say to me, Ben, Ben is the guy that most NBA guys are intrigued by. But right now it is a lot of intrigue. And the question is, again, you know, can he can he make shots, but do more than just make shots? And, and, and that's probably the big thing for him. But I, I think he's a guy that could go in the first round after this year. He's the most likely to leave after this season, for sure. And to Bellis, who knows? I mean, it just depends on how productive he is. And uh, again, guys these days, they don't have to go lottery. They don't have to go first round to leave. You know, they could go for a two way. A, a lot of these guys. Uh, so you never know. Yeah. Uh, before the end of today's uh, show, and I appreciate you for coming on, I wanted to just get your opinion because, you know, Arizona has three easier games to start their season. And when this comes out in just a day um, against Northern Arizona, uh, UT Rio Grande and North Dakota State, but then they're in the Roman main event uh, in Las Vegas. They started off against Wichita State um, and then potentially could face, you know, Michigan Top, a top team in the country yeah. in that championship. How, how do you see that potential matchup against Michigan, um, you know, working? Yeah, I mean, hopefully they get to Michigan because I think Michigan beats UNLV. Wichita State isn't any joke. I mean, they've got some good, good guards on that team. Um, so they got to get by them first in Vegas. And if they do, then you're almost playing with house money, you know, if you're Arizona. Um Michigan, you know, a team that a lot of people have in the preseason top 10. I have them right around there. Hunter Dickinson, one of the best bigs in the country. But it's a lot of freshmen, a lot of new faces. So I actually think Arizona could have a chance to knock them off there. And if they do, you know, then you're talking about going into Pac-12 play with a lot of momentum. Um, you know, they get a couple, couple games early um, in December against Washington and Oregon State that they can win both of those impact 12 plays. So they could, they could have a ton of momentum. And again, this Michigan team is just very, it's a lot of question marks because they're, they're loaded with top freshmen. I think they have like four top 50 freshmen coming in, but these freshmen, a lot of people never saw because we couldn't see them on the circuit their junior year. We weren't allowed obviously uh, to see them. So it's one of those things where I'm not sure how legitimate the rankings are, 
Um, we'll have to see how good this Michigan team is, but I know they have a hell of a big guy uh, in Hunter Dickinson. Yeah, that would be a great matchup, and if they yeah. could pull it off, it would be an incredible victory. But I wanted to ask you, how like how excited are you, and how big of an impact do you think um, you know fans in the building for the oh. first time um, in over a year? I mean, how how do you think that'll that'll look? It's going to be awesome. I mean, I'm I'm doing uh, Champions Classic first week. Then I'm flying out to California. I'm going to go to Villanova, UCLA. Two, Huge I think team. they're both in my top six. And then from there, I'm going to go to Texas Gonzaga, one and two for me. So, I mean, I'm just – I'm so excited to get out there. And, and, you know, the only games I went to, Ryan, last year, I went to the first four days of the season to the bubble. There were like three of us media people invited – in Mohegan Sun. Yeah, it's crazy. I did like four days of that, then three weeks for the NCAA tournament in Indy. And it was like, listen, it was great in a sense, right? That, that I was able to watch games, NCAA tournament games, but I couldn't talk to coaches in person, yeah. couldn't talk to players. Um, the stands were, you know, barely full, uh, barely full. I mean, they were like 10% to 20% full. And the streets of Indy were empty. I mean, it was, there was no atmosphere. So it, it just, obviously it wasn't a real year. Um, again, glad that there was a, an NCAA tournament and a champion in Baylor, but this year, man, like I can't wait um, for the kennel. Like I can't wait to go to Gonzaga, you know, as much as the champions classic will be fun in New York and Madison square garden, the best environments are the ones at the, the home arenas, you know, going to McHale, like I'm going to go at some point this year, I'm going to get out there. And just going there and 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 having, you know, at Gonzaga, at Duke, at Kansas, at Arizona, those places that are just so good, um, that's what I miss the most. Yeah, um, I can't wait, too, to see fans back in stands. But before we go, any final thoughts you have on this Arizona team in the first year of uh, the Tommy Lloyd era? Yeah, I mean, again, I think the biggest thing is for fans, be patient for Tommy Lloyd to get his own players in. Uh, it's going to take some time. And, and I think be patient while this NCAA investigation is still hanging over their head. They're not going to be able to get the players that, you know, Arizona fans are used to them getting. They're not getting the Mike Bibbies. You know, they're not getting um, some of those top 10 players. They're going to have to evaluate and they're going to have to develop players and, and find guys that fit his system. And I think they'll do it. But again, it's going to be a process. Yeah, well, Jeff, I want to thank you for coming on and taking the time uh, today. Um, and, yeah, I want to thank everyone for tuning in to uh, our podcast. Thank you.